So I'm, uh, I'm talking about building a, a better honeypot network, one that gives you uh, some intelligence, something more than um, what I'm seeing so far in uh, stuff I've played with. Uh, I've uh, been building this for like, I guess, the last month and a half and um, new to certain things like Flask, which is I'm using to display stuff and new to some Python stuff. So it's taken me a bit longer than some people might and it's a little bit rough, but I I have it out there on GitHub, so I'll, I'll just walk through it. Um, so my name is Josh Puri. I'm a security analyst with OpenDNS and Cisco now, because we've been acquired. Uh, I was previously a threat analyst at NASA and uh, helped build the security operations center there and a threat analyst at, at Mandiant. So I'm dealing with, um, currently with four Actually, I, I have a few more honeypots, but I haven't been processing the data. But the honeypots I'm dealing with in my um, instance are uh, an SSH honeypot, a malware honeypot, uh, one that involves gas tanks, which is awesome, and a SCADA honey, honeypot, and I'll go into more detail on that too. So the uh, I'm using Cowrie. It's a fork of Kippo, which is a SSH honeypot, a medium interaction honeypot where people, attackers, can connect in and... Um, uh, they think they're SSH'd into a system. It uh, writes two log files. Kippo writes just one log file. Uh, Cowrie saves a JSON um, log file and a log, just dot log. JSON's formatted for certain databases and um, for easier, uh, to, like, to work with a little bit easier. Uh, they both have a little bit different information, so I process both uh, when I'm looking through the, when I'm, working with them. Um, it creates session files just like Hippo. Uh, it, uh, if someone connects in, it will uh, record whatever their type, and um, which is great because you can replay it. Um, but the session files aren't readable. I mean, they're readable, but it's a mess. There's actually a Python script that's included with Kippo or Cowrie or other forks that plays it for you. So I, I wrote another script that takes that and saves it out to text files. Um, it saves those in the TTY and then session replay file file. It's a uh, date file name of some sort. Uh, Cowrie is great because Kippo. Uh, I, I remember it only allows about two. I think two accounts to log in, and if you want, you can set up more passwords, um, which is a pain because you have to watch for a lot of connections and then connect, uh, look at the auth log, and then you can add those passwords in to a file, and then those people are allowed or those accounts are allowed to log in, but Calvary has only, I think, two or three that aren't allowed, like root, root, and uh, root password, I think. Uh, everything else is allowed, so I just wanted as many connections as possible. Some people want to specify less. <coughs> uh, I do an IP tables rule to send all port 22 traffic on my honeypots to, uh, to the port that Calvary is listening on. And then uh, I change my admin access so I can still get into the system and do what I need to do. Um, uh, to a different port. Usually it's 2222. I, I feel like that's becoming pretty well known. I don't know. I, I went up one. Just <laughs> I'm also using Dionea. Uh, it's a malware honeypot. Its goal is to get get a copy of the malware that, uh, and it just listens on a whole bunch of ports. Um, it's kind of a weird honeypot. It's uh, Italian. I don't speak Italian. I don't know. I just <laughs> I managed to figure out how to install it. It's kind of a pain. Um, it writes to a SQLite database, which is also kind of annoying. Uh, some some tiny pots write to log files. Some write to databases. They all they're all different. They're different projects. They aren't owned by a single single organization. Even though the Honey HoneyNet project, I think, is trying to bring things all together. Um, it saves malware to a folder called BIS streams, which is always kind of strange. Maybe there's a reason for BIS streams, but anyway. Uh, I'm just pointing out that they all save to different places. I'm also using Conpot, which is a SCADA honeypot, and it's awesome. It imitates uh, industrial control systems. Um, so that writes to uh, flat log, uh, flat text files, which is great. And I'm looking at Gaspot just because it's so cool. It uh, it emulates sensors in gas tanks, so um, people who connect to them can uh, misrepresent the temperature of the gas tank and other such things. This article here uh, uh, from Trend Micro 
details the whole process and it's actually a really great oh it's a PDF it's a whole document um, but uh, those are fun to play with there's only if you download the specifications for the the gas tank sensors you can buy out the commands you would type and you get to play with it uh, these are the open ports on just the honey pot that I'm using I for this I had two honey pots running I um, they're both on Amazon um, and uh, I was going to speed up, or well, spin up a whole bunch last night, but you know, didn't do that. So, but this is what's running. Just a quick end map scan of this specific honeypot. Um, so there are some obstacles. Uh, installation is a pain uh, because they're all different. Every honeypot is different. Um, Dianaya doesn't like Ubuntu after 12.04 for some reason. I'm using Ubuntu. Uh, I found that out the hard way. There was a, a dependency it needed, so I just um, I'm using 12.04. I didn't want to limit, have to limit people with what I um, with the, the code that I wrote and put on GitHub. Um, but if you want to dial that, you have to use that, or you can try to figure it out. Um, it's just a shell script, which I'll get into too. Uh, current Honeypot networks that are interesting. I actually only have one on here, um, which is the Modern Honey Network, and it's really popular and. I, I love it. What's what really got me interested in it? The 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 guy Jason who wrote it, um, he's done a great job of bringing together a whole bunch of different honeypots uh, and an installer for a server. Um, it's it's a like basically a quick shell script. It actually he prefers Ubuntu twelve oh four as well for honeypots and server. Um, and uh, when you install it, it provides. Uh, a script that you can put on your honeypots and it just automatically connects. It uses HP feeds, which is a, an, an interesting, it's a way to transmit data securely to the honeypot server or to other servers. Um, it, the result of it is this map. You can, it's, not, it's not persistent. At the bottom, there are connections you can see as they happen, uh, states and countries and, well, not states, just one big, huge country. So countries just light up and little dots appear when things happen. But if you navigate away and come back, all that goes away and it's kind of, um, I mean, it's, it's eye candy and stuff, which is, I guess, cool. Um, there's a, another threat map. Threat maps seem to be the main goal of most honeypot servers. And... <laughs> And we all know, I mean, hopefully, you know the Norse one. Norse one looks great. Um, it's awesome, actually. That, but uh, having been a threat analyst, the map really is useless to me. It's <laughs> It doesn't do me anything. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I uh, management loves to look at it, though. They love to have a big screen with a map. Uh, threat but internet hacking attack attribu attribution map is actually the best map you can get. It makes pew sounds like uh, pew pew, and you can actually get that. That's available for free. The the pew pew attack map, which is I was gonna install it on my Honeypot server, but I uh, maybe later. Um, so we want more. We want to be like that guy, Brian Krebs, but we don't want to look. We don't want to learn Russian, probably, <laughs> and infiltrate carding forums and get death threats. Um, or be like this guy. Uh, Ali's an actor, but you know the character. We want to know what the attackers are thinking, or we want to know what these people are thinking. These um, who are wanted by the FBI and won't probably won't get, won't, they won't get caught because they're in China. Um, but uh, we are we deal with reports that are basically in the past. Uh, we deal with reports from the government, and uh, a lot of these ones that I've dealt with in the past. Um, they, I'll get list of domains, thousands of domains, things that are associated with some kind of botnet or something, and I'll go through these domains and I'll see legitimate domains like Microsoft.com and these things. And so you have to do a lot of busy work to get through all this crap. And it's pain, and it's sometimes it's really outdated. They give you they being whatever agency or department gives you what they give you, and it's you know it's a mess. Uh, we deal with reports from companies. This was a good report, but. Uh, a lot of times they're, they're skewed towards the company. They're a marketing um, vehicle. And you can get some good intelligence, but it's often after a lot of, uh, a lot of work on their part and time has passed. Um, like, you know, just another company report. Um, we get, you can get reports from feeds. So, uh, you know, you probably all, if you're interested in this kind of thing, subscribe to blogs and all sorts of stuff. Of course, this hacker Google Google alert doesn't get everything correct. Um, 
I don't I really get anything from this except news. But um, there's a lot of great blogs, but it's still all the past. I mean, I, we want to be like we want to be the people releasing the blog posts and releasing the new information. Um, so we want actionable intelligence. I want to predict the future a little bit. That's always what I thought I've my goal has been as a th threat analyst is to predict the future and get to it before the uh, before they can get to my organization. So my goals with this project are an easy installation. Uh, Modern Hunting Net actually covers that pretty well. Uh, I, I, it was very influential. I, I just didn't like the map as the goal. They have statistics too, but statistics don't help me either when I'm doing threat analysts. Um, uh, secure communication. I just you know wanted to make sure everything was traveling in the clear. The stuff I'm using doesn't use. I'm sorry, not traveling in the clear. It's traveling safely. The stuff I'm using. Um, uh, I'm using the Elk um, stack, Elasticsearch, Kibana, uh, Logstash. They. It's not secure naturally. You have to do some things on top of it. Um, I want to embrace new technologies like Elk. So uh, I want to get useful information. So um, the management issues with all these honeypots, say you have 40 honeypots out there or 100 honeypots. It's all, all your stuff is out there. You have all these different kinds of honeypots. Um, everything's in different folders, different databases. Uh, it should be easy to get to, but it's not. Um, so this is my initial diagram. I haven't changed it. There's that thing called log move. I, I don't know. I just wrote some scripts that I don't have anything called log move, but I move logs. Um, I have my honeypots at the bottom. I've I file move. I'm not sure about that either. But I have uh, on the honeypots, Logstash picks up the logs and does various things with them based on filters I've written. Um, and then I use uh, S Tunnel to create a secure connection. It's basically transparent to the systems or to the uh, applications that use it. And then um, uh, stuff is sent over to the server, which is running Redis as a log, uh, log broker or data broker. Logstash again runs and it's picking things up with filters. And then it goes into Elasticsearch and then Kibana display stuff. I also use, um, I have some scripts that, uh, which I'm, gonna, I'm actually about to get into, that use um, other cool stuff. So it's a pretty easy installation. I have this one script down here and this little, these two folders right there. Um, just a shell script. You can see everything that's in, that, it does, and you can modify it as needed. Um, uh, I already talked about S Tunnel. S Tunnel is great. It's really easy to configure. You can tell it to listen on a local port and send off to another IP to a port that's listening, and um, it keeps the connection encrypted. Uh, use Redis as a data broker. Um, I don't know much about it except that it brokers data pretty well. So uh, then Logstash picks it up. With a cool icon. Elasticsearch. And this is the this is a screenshot of just the um, the dashboard that I built for uh, in Kibana. It accesses the Elasticsearch database. You can see uh, in this one I've got I have a lot of SSH logins. I think I chose um, to view that for for one month. Uh, you know I put a server online uh, last week in S Sao Paulo, Brazil, and within seconds it had connections, which is pretty cool. Um, I've got a lot of gas pot connections. Some of these are me testing. And I've got Compot connections. Um, I, it's still actively in progress. I have filters in Logstash that look for certain things. And then that stuff gets pushed into Elasticsearch th so that you see a proper count of things. But I, of course, have the threat map. The threat map has to be there. Um, it's not as amazing as Norse, but I'm sure you can work with that. Um, the client installation is just as easy. After you install the server, it actually writes uh, a client um, shell script down at the bottom there, and uh, and this client folder and it zips it up and saves it in a folder and you get instructions in your terminal of uh, how to get that and go install it on your honeypots. So the scripts that I have running, these are on the client. I have two scripts. I tried to keep it minimal. I didn't want too much processing done on the client systems. <clears throat> I have git malware info.py and this uh, gets just a hash right now. Um, it's not the full functionality that I want, but it gets the hash and uh, it writes the information to a file for Logstash to process and send over to the other system for actual processing. Um, then I have read TTY, which, as I explained earlier, this uh, just reads those TTY files from the honey SSH honeypot 
and it saves it uh, to normal text for processing later on. Uh, the read TTY, just see, this is what it looks like. It's just, this is actually just an, I opened a text file. This is a screenshot of that. So you can see it's, they're downloading something. And, um, uh, it's a messy text file, so, um, but it's easy to parse through that with Python and get interesting information out of that. Uh, well, it's kind of redundant. But there's a piece of the log stash filter. It's just, it's just text. It, it's pretty simple to work through some if else commands. Um, what's this screen? Oh yeah, this is my, uh, these are the files on the, on the server. They are passed with log stash through S tunnel, um, to sit in this folder called opt files incoming. Um, and then my Python scripts read these files and process through them. So uh, in the analysis folder, I have a bunch of different things. I've got some, these API key.txt, those just hold my API keys for two things I'm using uh, for the moment. I'm going to be adding more, and I'll, I'm going to get into those in a second. So virus total API, this reads hashes from that file that was sent over from the honeypots and uh, sends it to virus total, getting back the results. And that's, that's um, useful. Uh, it'll be better when I can, um, when I set it up to actually send files that haven't been seen yet on virus total. I'm also working on um, integrating malware.com, uh, or if you want your own cuckoo sandbox uh, inside your own, what? okay, cool, inside your own environment. Uh, Compot reader, this reads uh, the JSON and the .log files and formats for a database. Uh, Cowry, oh sorry, Compot reader reads, uh, I get <laughs> get it mixed up because I mess with them so much. Compot just reads the one log file. Cowry reader reads JSON and the log files and formats for a database. And then Gaspot reader, same thing. Uh, I'm using special things like uh, the virus total API, which you can you can use that for free, but you have a limit of, I think, four calls per hour, which is kind of annoying. So I'm using the paid one thanks to my company. Um, I'm also using OpenDNS Investigate, which is basically a Google search for domains and IP addresses, um, which is a paid thing, or you could work there and get it for free. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm using uh, Cuckoo Analysis. That's coming, actually. So um, this is kind of a quick view, but just looking at Investigate data, I this is a screenshot from my... Um, Intel portion of the thing, which you'll see more of in a moment. Uh, it's just, if this is a SSH connection, they connected in and they called out to these IPs right here over on the left side. And I got some information, just who is data from Investigate. Who is data is just one part of what you can get from Investigate. Um, I'm looking at that IP, the Inzen.2. This is a the web interface view of dot .2. There's the same information, this is the who is AS information. Um, Another view of uh, another IP, this is a connection in and the password they typed and, and the username. I got some ASN information and then you could get more stuff uh, with the API. It's all documented online, it's public. Um, you could see all the domains associated with the various network prefixes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so in progress, I'm doing a DNA reader, which comes from SQLite, which is uh, a little bit of a pain. And as I'm, you know, I'm learning Python. So it's, uh, it was enough work for a month and a half to get everything going as it has been. But this is an active development. I'm not going to be stopping. So I'm going to keep going, and I'm hoping maybe other people would be interested in contributing. Uh, I'm doing passive DNS research as well. There's a really great free uh, passive DNS uh, sniffer that you can run on your system, and um, there's, it'll write to a database or a text file. Uh, malware analysis. And da the ability to download malware uh, specifically from when it comes in the honeypot, it's actually a, you know, a button to just mass download it all if you want to. Um, and I want to replay log CSI, cyber style, get some red code, some green code, <laughs> um, or something like that. I don't know. And download CSVs. I've just been kind of lazy. That's a really simple thing. I just need to make it so it writes to CSVs. But um, so you need metrics. I think I need to move a little faster. Uh, uh, dashboards. You need searching and you need that, th that threat map. Um, so I've got the threat map, as you see, and <laughs> very exciting. Um, this is searching. I searched for uh, gas pot. I got some results. Um, this is the uh, this is what it looks like. The Intel portion. It's kind of a mess. I mean, I'm just learning Flask, so it's not sortable yet. But I will sort it. 
And um, it's just giving me that who is information. It's, the, it's really not a whole lot. I'm getting the login information. I'm So far, I'm looking at like things like uh, gas pot connections, uh, the command they typed, con pot connections. I need to add in the command they typed. Um, uh, there's a lot more I can get from this as I build it out. Um, I also have a uh, just I write a text file of all the all the GET requests in basically view PCAP mode um, in into a text file that looks like this. You can't really read it, but it, you look at PCAPs and follow a stream of something. It's just the GET request. A lot of interesting things. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to make it so that this becomes something that is you can quickly look at it and go, oh, this is what's going on right now in the world. I don't know. So this is where you can get it. I made this cool fade. <laughs> so uh, I'll actually um, just real quick. I think I have a second. I'll show you. I have it open. You know, I demo gods. So I this morning I couldn't connect to my. I don't know if you can if we can if we can see it here. Oh, here we go. I couldn't connect to it, and I was like wondering what the heck was going on. And it turns out it got um, the IP address changed, like on Amazon Web Services. I've never seen that happen before. Um, it's kind of a pain to really get to, but uh, we can. You can kind of see connections coming in. And I can't really make it smaller, but at, and then the Intel portion, which is. Uh, Probably more interesting, in my opinion, um, what you just saw the screenshots of. So I can see successful connections. I've got some testing. Those are me this morning, actually. A um, <laughs> bunch of that stuff. But uh, there's that's not me testing. That one down there. And um, yeah, <laughs> I can look at unsuccessful SSH, which is useful. Uh, callouts to IP addresses. Um, Kind of minimal at the moment. Domains. I'm sorry that the screen is so. It's, I can't. Whatever. Um, uh, the oh oh, this is the part that I like, but it's a mess. So this is malware that has been found on Virus Total. Uh, it's a lot of Linux malware. Um, just a bunch of stuff. There's some DDoS stuff, and um, I have a link way over on the right. It's formatting, but. You can, so you can go, you can actually go look at the, oh my god. <laughs> you can go look at the virus total link. So, um, well, whatever. You get, the, you get the gist of it. So, um, then you can read about it and all sorts of cool stuff. So, I'm going to keep adding to it. Uh, hopefully, it'll become more awesome and something more useful. I wanted it to become a threat feed, um, something that you can use in your organization or your personal life or whatever you want and um, maybe get some statistics so, uh, uh, also to add is more pretty metrics because people do like that and actually is very useful to get a quick overview of what you think people are doing so I think I'm almost done uh, anyone have questions what's that flask is a web framework it's like um Django but it's much uh, smaller yeah, it's a it's a pretty easy to work with. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, it's open source. I I released on GitHub. It's um. Oh wait, let me go back to this thing, so you can write it down if you want. Um, available. Just go ahead and take it and use it and do what you want with it. It's all right there. It's very easy to work with. I'm gonna keep on updating. I I I keep on committing almost every day. So. Yeah. The one issue is, of course, if you don't have. Uh, Investigate access or virus total API key, those things won't work yet for you. But I'm going to add other stuff. I don't think it's right to have just things that are that cost money. So I, I like you should be able to pull from malware.com, m a l w r.com, which is a cuckoo sandbox online by Shadow Server. Um, they don't have an API really available, but the, uh, we have an awesome intern. I think he's an employee now, but he's written an API for it, so he's let me, he's allowing me to take that and and import it into this. So pretty cool. Yeah. Anything else? Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay.